If you look at an MRI of 40,000 people, you'll see that gluteofemoral fat, fat that stores in the hips and the thighs, although it might not be exactly fun, it doesn't have nearly as much of a negative effect in terms of our like, health outcome. However, central adiposity, fat that's stored in the central abdomen, that is where the problems occur. Not even necessarily with visceral fat, but just central adiposity in general, storing fat in that sort of apple shape. Now, I learned something about carbohydrates and how they affect that. It's based upon a relatively new study that I found very interesting. So we're gonna break it on down. Now, I'm pretty stoked to announce too that for the last couple of years, I have been working with Thrive Market on creating my own product with them. And we decided a couple years back that a good nut butter would be the perfect product to team up on. So my nut butter has officially launched. So there's a couple of different ones. There's a macadamia nut, there's a cinnamon Brazil nut, which is sweet and tastes amazing. That's sweetened with allulose. And there's a chocolate hazelnut flavor, which is amazing. And they're going to abide by my rules too. There's a few different nuts in them. And then there's some allulose and there's some salt. There's no fillers, there's no weird stuff. And the cool thing is if you get them through Thrive Market using that link down below, you'll save 30% off your entire grocery order, which also includes my nut butters. Plus you get a $60 free gift when you use that link. So you use that link down below and then you can find the nut butters there on the website and you can try whatever different flavor you want. I highly recommend you check them out. I created them in tandem with Thrive Market. So what you're getting is literally what I formulated and what I made. So definitely check them out. And if you're already a Thrive Market member, I'll put a link down below in the description that's specifically for a Thrive Market member that goes directly to that page as well. Okay, so what's kind of funny is if you look at some studies, it's going to indicate that all carbs are created equal and all carbs in excess are going to be bad when it comes down to gaining fat, specifically visceral fat or central adiposity. Well, I find that hard to believe because I don't believe that a calorie is a calorie. I do feel like different carbs do different things. And I feel like we have a degree of bioindividuality, like Bob may respond to certain carbs differently than Jane does, et cetera, et cetera. So I have two studies. The first one is a more broad study that was published in Nutrition Reviews and took a look at 16 different studies of people that have what's called normal weight obesity. It's basically being skinny fat, where you have just your, your normal BMI, but you have a lot of fat just in your middle. Okay, well, with this study, they found that, okay, most people that had normal weight adiposity ended up having high levels of glucose, hyper, uh, hyperglycemic, they had high levels of insulin, hyperinsulinemia, and they were generally insulin resistant. Now what this tells us is that, okay, these people probably ate a lot of carbohydrates. Now that's cool, but that leaves a lot to be desired. And it frustrates me because as someone that really tries to advocate for just whatever works best for the person, I don't like to say a blanket statement and say, too many carbs are going to trigger visceral fat because some people do oxidize carbs okay. So now there's a newer study out of uh, published in Nutrition Metabolism. This one's really interesting because this one goes a little bit more in depth, literally. Okay, it took a look at 102 people. Okay, and these 102 people were going in for surgery and they asked them, is it okay if we take a little sample of your sub-Q fat and also your visceral fat and uh, ask you to log your food, your previous food, let us know what you eat. And they volunteered and they said yes. So they got samples of their fat and then after the surgery, they said, okay, now go ahead and write out what you typically eat, write out your, your diet, okay? And what they were measuring within the fat is they were measuring a peptide that is known as a pellin. Now, a pellin is a peptide that is secreted. It's called an adipokine, okay? Now, much like leptin, leptin is also a peptide that is secreted by fat. Now, leptin, we have a whole different discussion on, but a pellin is generally associated with insulin resistance. When you see high concentrations of a pellin, a lot of times you'll see insulin resistance along with that. So that's why they were testing this. We're like, we wanna see people that have, you know, whatever, okay? Well, it was fascinating because they found that people that consumed high amounts of carbohydrates, just in volume, overall total carbohydrates, didn't necessarily have higher levels of appellant. So they weren't necessarily developing traits of insulin resistance. That would go against the grain of what a lot of people would think. But what did increase levels of appellant based upon diet questionnaire were people that ate high glycemic carbs a lot, 
even if the amount wasn't all that much. So it's not about quantity. It really is about quality. Not all carbohydrates are created equal. So you can't just say, oh, I consume 500 grams of carbohydrates, so I'm good. If you're consuming 500 grams of carbohydrates in pixie sticks, it's going to be completely different than if you're consuming 500 grams of carbohydrates in legumes. The point is you're probably not going to be able to consume 500 grams of carbohydrates in legumes because you're going to get full first. So that certainly factors in. But this apelin, that is, that is suggesting that certain foods are contributing to insulin resistance, not just carbohydrates as a blanket statement. That being said, doing something like a lower carb protocol is certainly going to limit the amount of high glycemic foods you take in, so it can certainly help. But if you are someone that still wants to eat carbohydrates and you are concerned about, hey, why do I have this apple shape? What is going on? Perhaps you need to switch over to like some beans, some legumes, some chickpeas, some very low glycemic carbohydrates for a little while and see how that works. It could be an insulin thing. It could be a number of different factors that have to do. Now, I will give a thoughtful nod to the fact that people that typically are going to be consuming higher glycemic foods might also be consuming other things that are hyperpalatable and other foods that aren't so good that are contributing to this apelin secretion. Okay, maybe they're consuming trans fats. Maybe they're, okay, so definitely, if someone that's typically consuming pixie sticks is probably not being conscious of what kind of fat they're using, right? You're not gonna see someone saying, I'm going to eat a bunch of pixie sticks, but then I'm gonna pay very close attention to make sure that I use the right quality avocado oil and all oil if you catch my drift. The point is this new emerging science really shows that foods and macros are not all created equal. We have to look at this big picture. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.